Get ready to get heroic, because today we're going to talk about writing old school, morally good heroes. By the way, my name is Brandon McNulty. I'm the author of Entry Wounds, and welcome to my writing channel. A number of my subscribers have been asking me to do a video on classic, morally good heroes. So today I thought I'd make a valiant effort to fulfill that request. What we're going to do, we'll cover the key traits of a morally good hero. We'll talk about why it's so difficult to write these types of characters. And finally, we'll wrap up the video with some tips for making these heroes engage. Here's your spoiler warning for today. The ones in red contain the heaviest spoilers. All right, now let's start off by answering the question, what makes a hero morally good? In other words, what distinguishes them from anti-heroes and regular old protagonists? Well, first off, they do the right thing. This means they have strong values, values like honesty, humility, sincerity, spirit, responsibility, selflessness, and they always show consideration for others. Better yet, and this is number two, these heroes hold their values even in the face of adversity. It's not enough to just have these values. The hero has to stand by them when the chips are down. This is often a key component of making these heroes interesting because we want to see how they respond when their values are challenged. Finally, the third thing is that their flaws are usually unselfish flaws, meaning they're not fueled by selfishness. So when it comes to character flaws, a morally good hero might be impatient, naive, short-sighted, or they may lack things like confidence, self respect, etc. These heroes typically won't have selfish flaws like being greedy, arrogant, or vengeful. Next, let's talk about the problem with morally good heroes. A lot of people complain about them and say that they're out of fashion, and here are three reasons why. First one is that these heroes can seem simplistic or predictable. Since they typically do the right thing and rarely stray from their values, we can easily anticipate that they will solve a problem by doing what's right or doing what creates the least amount of harm. They won't surprise us like anti-heroes do when they come up with unique and morally gray solutions. Second problem, these heroes can feel one-dimensional since everything about them is good. They represent good, they do good, they allow good to prevail. This can especially become a problem if they don't have their values values challenged in meaningful ways. Finally, the third problem is that these heroes can feel unrealistic or preachy. Seeing characters repeatedly doing the right thing, even in the face of criticism or punishment, it can make them feel idealized. Worse yet, if their portrayal isn't realistic enough, it can make them and their stories feel preachy. All right, now let's talk about how to make morally good heroes compelling. I have five tips for you. The first one is to torture them or in other words, create sympathy. Morally good heroes are rarely the coolest characters in the story. So rather than trying to make them seem cool, make them suffer. Show them repeatedly getting knocked down, and once they're knocked down, stomp on them. Then do it again, and again, and again. Punish them for who they are. Punish them for the good they do. Punish them when they slip up. And even when you do reward them, make sure there's another punishment waiting around the corner. When we see these characters suffer, we sympathize with them, we care about them, we buy into them. For example, Captain America is introduced as this skinny little guy who can't get respect, can't get a girl, and when he calls out a bully during a movie, he gets beaten up in an alleyway for it. Even after becoming a super soldier, he ends up getting sidelined as a mascot. Then later, when he starts winning people's respect, that even works against him, and at the end of the movie, he sacrifices himself, and instead of getting a happy outcome, his life gets put on pause for 70 years while the world goes on without him. Then there's Rocky. Everyone around him thinks he's a loser. He can't start a conversation with Adrian. He can't hold on to his gym locker. He can't even spell Del Rio. Hey, how do you spell Del Rio? Then, when he fights Apollo, there's that brief moment of victory that's followed by Rocky getting destroyed for the rest of the match. He breaks his nose for the first time, everybody gives up on him, and yet he still keeps fighting. Which brings us to our second tip, which is to test their morals and values. We can do this by giving our heroes a brutal dilemma. Force them to make a choice when there is no clean and easy answer. Push them to their limit, then break them, and see how they respond. We already talked about Rocky. He gets demolished by the heavyweight champ, and everyone gives up on him, including his manager. It's a moment where Rocky should call it quits and protect his health, but instead he chooses to fight. Then you have Luke at the end of Return of the Jedi. He chooses not to fight. He claims to believe in the peaceful way of the Jedi, and when the chips are down, he chooses non-violence, even when Palpatine cooks him with force lightning. Captain America makes a similar decision when he 
and his brainwashed friend Bucky fight at the end of the second movie. Cap values loyalty and friendship even when it means risking his own safety. Then you have the train scene from Spider-Man 2. Peter needs to protect his identity for the safety of him and his loved ones, but what he values above all is protecting others. He's willing to risk everything to save the people on the train, and it's an incredible act of self-sacrifice. Which brings us to our third tip, play up their most admirable qualities. This includes things like persistence, courage, selflessness, whatever it is. If you torture a hero and test their values, then it makes their good qualities shine bright. We buy into these characters more, and their actions and beliefs hit harder. Whether it's Rocky's persistence, Luke's belief in other people, Cap's loyalty and sense of duty, or Spider-Man's willingness to sacrifice what he wants most for the greater good. Fourth tip is to allow these heroes to fail or give up. Keep in mind, a hero shouldn't be perfect. They shouldn't be able to save everyone or win every battle, no matter how morally good they are. And let's face it, being a good person doesn't guarantee a good life. So rather than writing stories where heroes do the right thing and get rewarded, have them hit a wall. Have them fall short and question their beliefs. The sequence from Spider-Man 2 where Peter gives up being Spider-Man is one of my favorite movie sequences because it's so honest. It shows his limits, his frustrations, and then the relief he enjoys when he abandons his greatest responsibility. More importantly, it shows his humanity. He's not perfect, and even with superpowers, he struggles to get by. Then you have the ending sequence of Rocky 1. He goes to the venue before the big fight and realizes that Apollo is out of his league. Then at the very end, after all the grit and spirit he displays, he still loses. It's an honest outcome, and it's one that sticks with us and makes for an iconic hero. Finally, tip number five, allow these characters to be cheesy. And by cheesy, I mean shamelessly sincere. Some people hate it when heroes do or say something cheesy, but I think that's one of the best things about these types of characters. Because when sincere characters act sincerely, we know they mean it and it hits differently. For example, when Captain America fell on the grenade in the first movie, that was the moment I decided I loved his character. It's a cheesy scene, but it works because he's so dedicated to protecting the people around him. Same with Luke when he appeals to Han before the Death Star battle. What he says to Han is cheesy enough to make you want to vomit uncontrollably, but at the at the same time, it comes from a character who believes in the people around him. He wants Han to realize his potential, and we buy into it, just like we buy into Rocky when he gives his motivational speeches, and just like we buy into Spider-Man when he sacrifices everything to stop that train. So the takeaway here is to take your heroes seriously. Don't dumb them down for fear of embarrassment. Instead, let them say and do what they must, and let the sincerity shine through. So I hope this helps. Question of the day, who is your favorite morally good hero? Let us know in the comments section below. Thank you for watching. If you want to support the channel, please pick up a copy of any one of my books and be sure to leave reviews on Amazon. Entry Wounds is great if you like thrillers. It's about a guy who picks up a haunted gun and he can't put it down until he kills six people with it. Also, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Check out my other videos. Maybe hit that thanks button for me. And as always, remember to keep on writing.